Welcome back to Bite Size Chemistry. Today we're going to talk about the combined gas law. And our combined gas law brings in Boyle's, Guy Lussac's, and Charles's law all in one. Okay. And we can describe this combined gas law using the equation P1, V1 over T1 equals P2, V2 over T2. Wow, look at this interesting thing here. You can use this combined gas law to solve any gas law problem. For example, if I read my problem and I know or I see that I'm only given pressure and volume, so ATM and liters, well then all I'm gonna do is ignore the T1 and there's Boyle's law. If I'm given pressure and temperature and I see no volume in my problem, then I'm gonna get rid of volume. There you go, guy Lussac's law. And finally, if I'm given volume and temperature and I see no pressure unit, get rid of the pressure, there's Charles's law. So when it comes to studying for your test, just memorize the combined gas law. And then when you're solving, cover up what you don't see in your problem Whatever's less left is the equation you're going to use. Okay, so notice we have six variables here, right? Which means in our problem, if we see a pressure, volume, and a temperature, we know we're working with the combined gas law, and we know we're going to be given five of the six variables. Okay, so when you're solving these, go ahead and make sure of the following that P and V units match. So if pressure is an ATM, it has to stay an ATM. If you have liters for one, make sure you have liters for the other. And make sure here's the important one, that your temperature unit must be in Kelvin. Some of your teachers will get really tricky and give you a temperature unit in Celsius. Make sure you convert it to Kelvin. So I'm looking at my problem and I notice I have a volume unit in liters, a pressure unit in ATM, and a temperature unit in Kelvin. That tells me I have a combined gas law. So I'm going to write my combined gas law problem. And then I'm going to list all my variables. So I have P1, V1, T1, P2, V2, C2. And I'm going to read my problem and start filling out these variables. So it says a gas occupies 5 liters, so that's my V1, at a pressure of 1.2 atm, and a temperature of 350K. So look, I just filled out P1, V1, T1. If the gas is compressed, so we're squishing it to three liters, that's my P2 or V2, and the temperature drops to 250 Kelvin, what will the new pressure be? So I'm looking for P2. So I'm just going to put an X there because that's what I'm solving for. Now remember, go ahead and just plug these values into the equation that you wrote. So I have 1.2 times 5 over 350. And that's going to be equal to x times 3 over 250. All right, I know that's a lot of numbers, so we're going to try to simplify it first so there's less numbers to deal with. So on the left-hand side, I'm going to do 1.2 times 5. And that's going to give me 6 over 350. And then I'm going to multiply x times 3, that's 3x, put it over 250. So that's step one, simplify your terms. Step two is going to be doing some cross multiplying, all right, to get everything up to the top line. So I'm going to do 250 times 6, which is going to give me 1,500. And then I'm going to do 350 times 3x, which is going to give me 150x. Okay. Now that I got everything on the top line, the last thing I need to do is get x by myself by itself. In order to do that, I'm going to divide both sides by 1050. That's going to cause this 1050 to cancel out, leaving me at just x. And so I'm going to do 1500 divided by 1050. And that gives me, if I round to the hundredths, 1.48, 1.43, my bad, equaling x. Well, what is x? x is our p2, so what this is telling me is my p2 value is 1.43. My first pressure unit was an ATM, so my second pressure unit must be an ATM, right? 
So the big kicker here is just making sure that you simplify first and then cross multiply. Right? And then everything else is the same. Right? I'll see you next time for a very last gas law.